I don't know if I don't know it for a fact, but there must be a dark web. <laughs> Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I am excited to talk to you today with the director of Dark Web, Cicada 3301. Alan Richson is here on the Film Threat Podcast. Alan, uh, good to talk to you, sir. Um, when I, As I see you, I didn't realize you're in the movie in a significant right. part. And, and oh, the, butt, the butt of many jokes. You must have a, a good sense of humor about yourself. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I like to be the one that uh, people make fun of in a film, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the thing for me was trying to tackle this kind of subject matter, the dark web, Cicada 3301, the secret society, computers. It feels a little heady for me, for most people. Um, so, I, you know, I just wanted to throw some comedy in there. And, um, you know, you got to have the guy that you make fun of, you know. So we've got Agent Carver in there, the um, NSA buffoon, and uh, and I think it, it makes it palatable for a lot of people. It de well, it definitely makes it relatable. I mean, I, I mean I'm glad you use, use the word buffoon because that's the first thing that popped into my head. It's like you cast yourself as like a buffoon. Is that like, how you would describe me? <laughs> well, as your character, not you. But, um, right. but oh, yeah. okay, good. Okay, good. good. We got that. Straight. Definitely like a fun comedy thriller that I have not seen anything that, I mean, I, the thing maybe closest thing you could compare it to is something like National Treasure, you know, with Nick Cage, where oh, you're cool. constantly like unraveling some other place that needs to go. But tell me seriously, like where it came from, um, where the concept came from. We all hear about the fact that there's a dark web. I, for one, believe that there's, that there, that it exists. We know some form of it exists, but. Are there secret societies like uh, like is portrayed in the film? This sort of dark underbelly of the web. Like, does that does that something like that really exist? I'm just curious your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a you know the way I've seen it described is um, the internet is an iceberg, and what what we most of us uh, use the internet for is sort of the the top of the iceberg peeking out. And the dark web or the deep web, whatever that would be, is sort of the rest of the iceberg. So it's there. Most of it is there's nothing nefarious about it at all. It's it's um, um, it's the underbelly of the Internet that nobody needs to see or, or, or to know about. Um, of course, there is, uh, you know, there's there's, of course, like the, the, the more nefarious side of things that people probably think of when they think of the dark web. Um, you know, the black markets and drugs and arms deals and, you know, that kind of thing. And that certainly exists. Um, but it's also a place that people go to for privacy, um, you know, so, you know, people using onion routers and, and, and VPNs and things like that. Many don't have, um, you know, aren't, aren't involved in like illicit affairs, but they, they just don't want Google selling their information or whatever it is. So, um, so, so there's, there's a lot of different reasons for this thing to exist, but, um, but it's there. And um, it's, it, you know, I think it makes for interesting movie fodder, you know, uh, it makes for a good plot point when you've got um, ideas that are sort of global, uh, you know, global world order ideas um, bubbling under the surface and uh, you know, um, people can sort of transmit these undetected. Um, but the thing about Cicada 3301, though, that I found so fascinating, th this, is, this was a, uh, essentially a game, uh, a scavenger hunt of sorts for, um, for, for br brilliant minds, um, not just people who are sophisticated with uh, computers, but with literature, poetry, music, a pretty well-rounded scavenger hunt for geniuses. Um, this started popping up in 2012, but it wasn't it wasn't on the deep web, which is what made it so interesting to me. This was, um, you know, this this essentially started on, you know, Reddit message boards, 4chan, and um, things that we all have access to and don't need an onion router for. Um, so it, it was something that went from uh, the internet to uh, above ground um, when a bunch of QR, QR codes were found around the world at the same time connected to the games. Um, and it, it became much more than an internet phenomenon. So um, I think you know, the distributor saying dark web makes it um, seem nefarious, but this is something that um, has, has been under everybody's noses uh, since 2012. And, um, you know, the, 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 the lucky few who have figured this out and, and carried through with the game have had an interesting time.
So I, I, I just thought it was a great, uh, you know, just great subject matter for a, for a fun film, sort of like National Treasure and Adventure. And um, wanted to make the ideas that Cicada 331 talks about in the games um, relatable, you know, so that's, that's what we did this for. Well, definitely, I, I didn't realize the, the um, uh, scavenger hunt for geniuses is a real thing. I didn't know that. I yeah, you know, clued me in on something interesting. I think that those, um, you've seen um, the news reports, this was months ago, of the monoliths popping up all right. over the world. That's There's right. got to be something there with that. There's got to be some sort of scavenger. That, I think, that mystery will be uh, revealed, I think, at some point, because now they've disappeared, right? They were popped up and they're gone. Right. What's so, what's so fascinating to me about that is we live in a world where everybody wants credit for, for their work, right? Everybody wants the, the, the fame or the notoriety. And for somebody to put the, the time and effort into putting those up um, and sort of getting away with it and taking them down, I mean, it's it's like the, the sort of Banksy phenomenon, you know? Um, right. It's very rare that somebody would want to sort of remain anonymous or, or, or not commercialize an endeavor like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it could be as simple as art, um, for somebody, and it could be, you know, people wanting to, you know, create some kind of game or, 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 or fascination with this kind of thing. I want to, for I wanna, someone, you know, later down the road, but who knows? I want to talk about your cast. You really have like this amazingly well balanced cast, um, you know, where you've got uh, more serious actors and then you've also got Ron Funches. So, um, I, I, I love. I think he's funny in anything he does. He adds a levity. I'm sure it was fun to hang out with him on the set. What was it like and, and um, how difficult was it to put the pieces of the puzzle together of this whole cast to get that well-roundedness and then include yourself in, in a, a pivotal comedic role? Right. <laughs> um, well, you know, what's funny about the comedic role is that that, that wasn't there originally. Um, when we got Jack Kessie, who's a, a brilliant actor and I was lucky to work with, um, he did a phenomenal job with the role. Um, this was, this, this, he has such kind of a gravity to, to, to the work that he does that I sort of realized as we were getting ready to shoot this thing, um, it might be nice to balance that out with a funner character. So um, Agent Carver was sort of growing as we were shooting. <laughs> um, uh, it just felt like a fun, it would be kind of a fun odd couple and, and, and add to the movie, but um, but you know, the, I mean, the cast, I, I, like I said, lucky to work with them. They're all phenomenal. Connor Leslie, Jack Kessie, um, Ron Funches, Andrea Apergy, um, played, uh, Agent Sullivan. I mean, really, um, Chris, Chris Holder Reed, uh, Holden Reed, uh, all did a really wonderful job. Um, but Ron, like you, you mentioned Ron, Ron's a stand up comic. Um, you know, I mean, he didn't necessarily start out acting. He started out on stage and, it was a lot of fun seeing um, seeing what he what he did with this character. But what I told him when we started out, I, I just was getting to know him, and he has such a likable person. I mean, his just who he is um, is just a lovely. He's a lovely human being, and I really wanted something like that. Somebody that's of course fun can can carry the comedy or come up with ideas, which he did. Um, but somebody who's very approachable and and he really did a good job. I mean, if if I didn't know any better, I'd say he'd been just acting. For, for for a very long time. I mean, he, he, he did a great job. And and when the cameras stop rolling, um, it's amazing how sort of quiet and composed he is. He's just there to yes, thank you. That was great, man. That was really funny. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be, I'll be over here if you need me again. <laughs> you know? So his um, his on stage persona is very different, I think, than than um, than than how he carries himself, comports himself. And uh, he was uh, really lovely to be around. Oh my God. Oh my You're God. telling me it's all an act that Ron is like, <laughs> when the cameras are rolling, he's all fun and games. And then when the camera's off, he's a uh, Mr. Serious De Niro. Maybe some version of himself. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a character. A couple things struck me about uh, the film, too, like um, uh, in terms of being a thriller comedy. One is the design of some of the things, like the, the party, the sort of big climactic party which i don't want to get in any spoilers but also there's this this gunfight in the woods with the weirdest costume design like it's, <laughs> you could have just like i i felt like you could have made what would be expected choices what i really enjoyed about about the film were the you know choices that you made that i i, I would not have expected the 
basically the baby head gunfight, which just blew my mind. And people are saying this for the first time. <laughs> or no, like, I, what, what? It's just weird. The baby head gun. It was just like bizarre. And what I forget is what I was constantly reminded of is that this movie, it, we're not seeing it play out. We're seeing someone, we're seeing our, the lead protagonist explain what happened in his mind as he saw it. So things are embellished and changed. And I am I just appreciate that was a really fun idea that you got to play with. Can can you elaborate more on that? I thought that that was a really- Yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, to me, that's, that's the most, I think that's one of the most important um, pieces of the film. I mean, that's sort of the skeleton that this whole film is built on is that unreliable narrative device. And you know, if, if if you know if, if I'm going to set that up, um, why not veer? You know, why not why not see how far we can push the boundaries of that kind of thing? But um, what I think people are expecting is um, a movie about the dark web and some dude on the internet, you know, internet hackers, and um, you know, and then the bad guys come in and it turns into like Patriot Games with you know. I really wanted to start, uh, subvert expectations and show people that we can make something that's um, original, kind of sort of high concept and make it entertaining and palatable and still talk about something that's worth talking about to me, which, you know, these ideas that people wrestle with, with Cicada, within Cicada, the you know themes of, of the institution versus the individual and, um, and, and, and what kind of world order we should be aiming for. Uh, should be completely self-reliant or rely on each other. I mean, these are things that I think are worth talking about, but how do we talk about that in a way that's entertaining or, 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 or you know, relatable to most people who just want to kind of escape in, into a film? Um, I think the unreliable narrative device did that for us, and I fully expect to subvert expectations. I don't think people are, are quite... I don't think people are ready for what the film, <laughs> which is good. I mean, I kind of, you know, I, I, I still remember the first time we tested it for somebody and the first big turn in the movie where people realize, oh, this is a lot of this is happening in somebody's mind. Um, and there's this really big laugh where they're almost relieved because they're like, was this real for a second? I'm, I'm good that this wasn't all actually happening. Um, I think that kind of payoff is a lot of fun. And I think people are really going to enjoy that. Yeah, I, um, I know what moment you're talking about. You shouldn't ruin it because I'm not gonna ruin it. But, don't ruin yeah. it. But we're doing we're doing a watch party. I, I think you're aware. On uh, Friday, March 12th, we're doing a watch party with Dark Web Cicada 3301. You are all invited. Everyone watching this or listening to this, watch uh, the Film Threat Watch Party for for Dark Web Cicada 3301 on Friday, March 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. There, there's the plug. I had to get the plug in. But you'll there be there. And most of the cast, from my understanding, is going to be here. I'm hoping Ron Funches will make it, too. Uh, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to have. <laughs> it's gonna, a lot of watch, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a fun reunion. Um, I know you got to run, but thank you so much uh, for being on the Film Threat Podcast. We will, we will get more answers as we watch the movie, which is going to be a lot of fun because there are very specific moments. I have to add, I have a ton of questions for you. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, I save it for then. I don't want to ruin it. So everyone listening, watching, be there. Um, Alan, thank you so much for being on the film. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.